YouTube, hi, what's going on? You could tell probably by the background that I am no longer at the house. Last time you saw me in the Jeep, we went book shopping. Wink, wink, hint, hint. We're gonna do that again today. We need to go book shopping because I've pretty much ran my, my bookshelf dry. There's maybe a few select series that I haven't finished, like Malazan or Covenant of Steel, like like a few select series that I have, you know, a few books left to read, but for the most part, I, I've tapped it out. I've read everything that I have. It's time to replenish the stock, people. I'm going to try and push myself. I think I'm gonna try to branch out into different genres. Ashlyn has helped me do that with some of the books that she's helped me get into with book swaps and TBRs and all that stuff. So I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna branch out into different genre spaces and see what we can't walk away with. September, I was gifted a lot of, uh, let's say, gift cards, because... It was his birthday! September does happen to be the month of my birth, yes. So pretty much all these books are gonna be free. Without freaking further ado, let's just jump into it. Guys, <laughs> we scored. I was given by three lovely women in my life. My mother, my mother-in-law, and my wife's grandmother. They all gave me money for books. Overall, I had $200 to spend on books. <laughs> so, and we did that. Some of the books in here were actually gifts. Three of them were by my wife, and then one was by my sister. But other than that, the rest were purchased by me. I have 18 books that I need to discuss with you. It's, it's a stack and a half, so uh, here we go. So the first thing, I'll, I'll start with the gifts. The gifts um, by my dear wife and by my dear sister. My sister got me Anthem, Rush in the 70s. I'm a big rock and roll and heavy metal fan. I grew up on this band. Rush is iconic to me, they're fantastic. They're the reason why I like to play drums. They're the reason why I listen to the music that I listen to. They were really big in my formative years. My sister found a series, and she bought me the first one, a series about the history essentially the biography of Rush. And I'm actually really excited to read this because I need to branch out. And she, that's why she got me this book. And what better one to give me than one about a band that I love. So thank you, Chelsea, you're amazing. I will be slipping this in the TBR very soon. I need to get back into nonfiction anyway. I've, I've taken too long of a break, so. The next gift 
was from my my dear wife. She got me a trilogy, a trilogy that I've been looking at for so long. That is The Warlord Chronicles by Bernard Cornwell. This is an Arthurian epic. This is about King Arthur. You know, this is historical fiction at its best. I hear Bernard Cornwell is the stud at this. He's just the man. We've got The Winter King, Enemy of God, Excalibur. Very excited to jump into these. These will be coming very soon on a TBR list and there may be a vlog involved with this. I'm so excited because a lot of the authors that I read have attributed Bernard Cornwell with so much influence to them. Uh, guys like George R. R. Martin who wrote A Song of Ice and Fire or John Gwynn who wrote one of my favorite series of all time, The Faithful and the Fallen. So that is exciting. Now, now we're getting into the books that I've purchased. The Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb. Miss Robin Hobb herself, the queen of fantasy, I hear her called. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We're, I'm finally gonna get into the Farseer trilogy. This is also gonna be dipping my toes into the realm of the elderlings. I know she's written about 17 or 18 books, something like that in the realm of the elderlings, uh, which I think encompasses about five different series. And this is the first series in the five. It starts off with the Assassin's Apprentice. Then I think book two is Royal. Assassin. Ooh, yes. And then Assassin's Quest. I've never read Robin Hobb, so it probably wasn't the smartest thing of me to just buy a whole trilogy. But the things that I've heard about Robin Hobb's writing from either authors that I love or booktubers that I love. I've heard nothing but fantastic things, so I thought, screw it, I'm just gonna buy the whole trilogy and see how it is. But I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love it. Next trilogy on the docket is, I don't even know what this is called. What is this even called? I don't know what this trilogy is called. B.E. Schwab. So her, her Darker Shade of Magic trilogy, I guess, is what I'm gonna call it. I've had my eye on B.E. Schwab for so long. I mean, I'm all about time travel, and I'm all about it being magically done. The first book is A Darkest Shade of Magic. The second, Gathering of Shadows. Ooh, yes. And then finally, A Conjuring of Light. <sighs> Dude, nothing beats it. Guys, this has been a long time coming. I finally got Lies of Locke Lamora. The Lies of Freaking Locke Lamora. I've heard so many good things about this. I've been putting this off for far too long. If you're uncertain of what this book is about, let's just say swashbuckling fantasy, okay? And there's a George R. R. Martin blurb on the front, so that, that gives me great confidence in Scott Lynch's ability to write a story. Next is Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan. That has caught my eye for some time. It's, it's the first in the trilogy, and I think there's six books in this world. Just hear this. It's a bloody business overthrowing a king. But amid the chaos, a whispered rumor is spreading. A rumor of a broken promise, omens of death, and the gods returning to walk the earth. Good. Lordy lord. That sounds incredible. Brandon Sanderson says a lot about this. Brent Weeks says a lot about this. Big heavyweight names. Blurbing this baby out. A promise of blood. Next on the docket is Dark Matter by Blake. Crouch. This has caught my eye for a little bit. I finally just said, screw it, I don't have an excuse. Are you happy with your life? Those are the last words Jason Desson hears before the kidnapper knocks him unconscious, before he awakens to find himself strapped to a gurney, surrounded by strangers in hazmat suits, before a man he's never met smiles down at him and says, welcome back, my friend. In this world, he's woken up to Jason's life is not the one he knows. His wife is not his wife, his son was never born, and Jason is not an ordinary college professor, but a celebrated genius who has achieved something remarkable, something possible. Is it this life or the other that's the dream? And even if the home he remembers is real, how will Jason make it back to the family he loves? He he sounds like he freaking, he can write a psychological brain twister of a, of a novel. Next, we're going to get into some spooky stuff. October's just around the bend, and of course, uh, as a man who hasn't read m much horror, I think what better way to start with the king, <laughs> pun definitely intended, pet cemetery. I don't think I need to explain this, and I'm not going to. Pet cemetery has been on the radar, of course, since I was a kid. I remember my dad saying that he read this when he was about my age, married to my mom. They were in their first apartment, and he, re he read this late at night. He finished it around midnight or one in the morning, and he said that he didn't want to go to bed after he read it. Of course I gotta read this book then. Hopefully I'm not desensitized to a lot of the stuff that's in here because of, you know, <laughs> my generation and the kind of media we grew up with. <laughs> so it's probably gonna be part of a special vlog in October. Be on the lookout for that bad boy. The next one, I was not looking for this. I was not looking for this in the slightest, but it just so happened to be on the shelf and I thought, that is an excellent idea. I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. <laughs> 
Matherson. Matheson. Matheson. Richard Matheson. I Am Legend. Of course, huge breakout movie in like the late 2000s. Uh, I think it came out when I was in like sixth or seventh grade. So of course we watched it over and over and over. But I knew the book was radically different from the movie. The movie takes like the, the, the spirit of the book in changing core aspects of the story. I think in the movie, they're just kind of weird, zombified, mutated humans. But in here, the world does get infected with this disease, but they all turn into vampires. The blurb on the back, Stephen King said, I think the author who influenced me the most as a writer was Richard Matheson. I don't think I need to look any further. The next book is Wool. Uh, again, one of those things that I've kind of had my eye on for a while, and I wanted to get a science fiction book because the only science fiction that I've been reading all year, it's, it's just been Red Rising, which isn't a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. I want to branch out into other science fiction, like, like science fiction where they're not traveling to other planets or galaxies and they're not trying to like, technology's not so advanced that it's hard to comprehend what's going on. This is more dystopian. The next one was something that I, again, I was not looking for this. I was not looking for this in the slightest, but it just so happened to catch my eye, a harvest of ash and blood. Look at that fetching cover. She gleams, but it's not just the cover that got me. What is the price of magic? Not the magic of tricks and illusions, but the kind that heats cities powers armies and transforms continents. Magic that forges empires. The Brannock Empire owes its existence to this magic. And for those in power, no price is too great. Even when that price is their own children. For it is the ashes of those with magical abilities that the Church of Alchemy harvests to fuel this machine of empire. So the furnaces burn and the empire grows and they call it progress. Trying to escape a lifetime of regrets and outrun his own demons, veteran soldier Lachlan Thatcher embarks on the fourth crusade to Leftland, a country rich in magic, desperate to save her brothers, Ronnie joins Lockwood's squad only to discover that war is very different from all the songs and fancy speeches. As politics and power clash, Kenya, a seeker, and Ord, a priest of the Church of Alchemy, find their foundations of loyalty and faith shaken and crumbling. In this theater of chaos, magic, and treachery, soldier and priest alike will find their humanity in as much danger as their lives. Will they lose themselves to cruelty and deception, or can one good action reverse the course of generations of evil? Holy crap. A bold, brutal look at war and belief, a harvest of ash and blood, is a sweeping epic Epic fantasy perfect for fans of The Witcher and Joe Abercrombie. Say less. <laughs> Say less. Holy crap, that sounds great. Tell me that doesn't sound good. Holy moly, I'm really excited for that one. One more book, ladies and gents, one more book. Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. And I've wanted to sample him for a long time, and this is his magnum opus, but Pillars of the Earth, baby. If I could fall in love with Lonesome Dove, which is literally a book about retired Texas Rangers going on a cattle drive from South Texas to Montana. I could enjoy a book about them building a dang cathedral, okay? I... There's, there's some underlying tensions, of course. It's not just, oh, they built the church, you know, in a thousand pages, because this is nearly a thousand pages long. There's so much more to it. It's a beautiful love story. It's a story of, uh, of tragedy and of sweeping ambition and accomplishment, and I think I'm going to fall in love with it. So all in all, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Wow. 18 books. What an addition to the shelf. A little bit burdensome now because now I'm gonna have to build another shelf. Definitely bring you guys along for the ride for that. Uh, but we're gonna have to redo the shelf. We're going to have to redo everything about it. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this book shopping vlog and I hope you enjoyed the book haul. Let me know your thoughts about some of these books. If you've read them, if you haven't, if they're on your TBR, if you want to know more about them, if you want to see some of these in a vlog, let me know. Guys, thank you so much for coming along for the ride. It's always fun taking you book shopping. There's gonna be plenty plenty videos like this in the years to come. Love you guys. See you in the next one.